Talk about riots in the streets. I, I don't know how many of you have, have followed the story in Chicago. Um, but it truly, truly, what has happened in Chicago over this last weekend, a Sunday night, and what's continuing to happen in Chicago is, is truly horrific. Now, uh, this is true of since, you know, you know, f for months now, since the demonstration started, since the Black Lives Matter demonstrations have started, we have seen consistently, consistently, riots in Chicago, uh, uh, destruction of property in Chicago, mayhem in the streets of Chicago, just, just the thugs, uh, the thugs, uh, uh, you know, taking over the streets. Uh, Jonathan Honing, I think, on, on, was on one of the shows, and he lives in downtown Chicago, and he was, he was describing how he was in whatever floor his apartment is on, but down at street level, I mean, they were crushing everything. They were just slamming windows and destroying stuff and, 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 and just, just horrific. You know, I would urge Jonathan and everybody else listening who lives in Chicago to get the hell out of that city because that city has been, it was in trouble before this. It was a disaster zone before this. It was basically bankrupt before this. It was, it's, it's a city that, that, that went from being run basically by the Democratic Mafia, but at least the Democratic Mafia, they used to be competent and interested in some economic progress, but thoroughly and thoroughly corrupt, this is the dailies, um, into being uh, run by power-lusting, incompetent, uh, l crazy leftists who have really uh, just abandoned the city to the worst elements possible and have so degraded the quality of education, so destroyed the educational system in Chicago, which we'll get to in a minute, that what we saw on Sunday night in Chicago is, is, is to be expected. It's to be expected. You know, I can't remember what it was. What was it, five years ago now um, when Black Lives Matter uh, first... Um, I just to answer that question, Derek, just to answer that question. Man. Uh, who do you think will win the election now that Camilla has been chosen? I said... I, 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 you know, rewind. I think it's more and more likely that it's Trump, not because Kamala, I don't think Kamala makes a difference one way or the other to the election, although she'll bring out the black vote more. Uh, I think it's because of, of, of the Democrats have moved so to the left and there's so much rioting that I think that emboldens and, and motivates Trump supporters. About five years ago, I think it's exactly five years ago, um, when, uh, when the first Black Lives Matter demonstrations and riots happened, the, um, one of the first places where you saw this was in Chicago. And I remember at the time, I was actually doing a radio show in Chicago at one of the local radio stations in Chicago. And it, it became evident to me what Black Lives Matter was really about because of the demonstrations in Chicago. Because the Black Lives Matter, there was a police shooting in Chicago that looked really horrific. It looked like the police really did, and it turns out I think the cop has been prosecuted. And, you know, this was a real police brutality, you know, real uh, police shot somebody dead for no good reason, and uh, the policeman will go to jail for this. But Black Lives Matter rallied around this, and they demonstrated. And, of course, the demonstrations were not in front of the police headquarters. They were not in front of town hall. They were not in front of the government entities. Of course, it is a, a function of government. Police is a function of government. So if you're demonstrating against the police, you should be demonstrating against go the government functionaries. No. Black Lives Matter chose on that day to demonstrate on the Magnificent Mile in Chicago. Now, I don't know how many of you have ever been in the Magnificent Mile in Chicago, but it's magnificent. It, it truly is a magnificent part of the world. It is a mile-long strip of Michigan Avenue, North Michigan, which has uh, luxury stores, uh, beautiful stores, has skyscrapers. Uh, some of the skyscrapers from the golden age of skyscrapers. And Chicago, let me just say something about Chicago. Chicago is a magnificent city in so many respects. It has one of the most beautiful uh, uh, skylines, I think, in the world. It was the place where innovative and exciting and break, groundbreaking architecture was really, you know, uh, established. Uh, Frank Lloyd Wright, of course, built a lot of homes in Chicago and lived in Chicago. 
Uh, but many architects, uh, Frank, one of Frank Lloyd Wright's teacher, uh, built some of the early skyscrapers in, in Chicago. And, and there's a lot of Art Deco. They're just some beautiful, beautiful buildings in Chicago, and many of them on the Magnificent Mile. Of course, there's the Trump Tower, which is not, not a bad building, in, uh, right there in Chicago, not far from the right, I guess, on the other side of, of the Magnificent Mile. Um, and it's just, a, it's just a beautiful place. If the sun is shining, which is not that often in Chicago, and it's not too hot, it's, the sun is shining and not too hot, uh, then, you know, Chicago is just this beautiful, beautiful city. It, you know, it's got these condo buildings. I, I've been up on some of the top floor, floors of some of the skyscrapers in, in Chicago on Michigan Avenue where people live and just magnificent views, and they've got the lake there. It's just a gorgeous city, just a gorgeous city. And it, it, it's kept up. I mean, they, they, they constantly are building. There's a lot of uh, new skyscrapers. A lot of skyscrapers are nice. Um, and it's, it's, truly, it's truly a nice place. Except that the politics is insane. And, and uh, the politicians have been dedicated over the last, uh, I'd say, 15 years to destroying the place. And they're achieving that. They're succeeding. Anyway, Black Lives Matter did not go to demonstrate in front of the police. It did not go to demonstrate in front of City Hall. It did not go to demonstrate in front of any government building. They went to demonstrate in front of the luxury stores in Magnificent Mile. And they wouldn't let people go in. And they had big signs condemning capitalism. And I went, whoa, wait a minute. These people are supposed to be about police brutality, supposed to be about police brutality against blacks, supposedly against, against systemic, violent, uh, systemic racism. Uh, among the police force, all things that I can sympathize with. I don't agree with because I don't think it's really there the way they see it, but I can sympathize with, right? I, I'm against, definitely against police brutality. But they're not, they don't, that's not their agenda. Their agenda was and is the destruction of capitalism. Their agenda is the agenda of equality, of egalitarianism, of tearing people down, of looting luxury stores. That was the agenda. It wasn't a byproduct. It wasn't they happened to be a demonstration and then some people, you know, happened to be in front of stores. No, they went to the stores. They blocked the stores. They wouldn't let people enter. They wouldn't let them do business. They weren't smashing windows yet. And that was four or five years ago. And it was clear from that that Black Lives Matter was not about police brutality. It was about a, an egalitarian, I wouldn't even call it socialist because that's too nice of a word for them. The egalitarians, the nihilists who hate and they've been taught to hate. And we'll get to that. I don't even think it's, I mean, everybody has agency, so I don't, but I don't think it's really their fault, the, the common person demonstrating. I think it's the, it's the teachers, the professors, the political leaders, the intellectual leaders, the people who've taught them to hate the rich, to hate success, to hate prosperity, to think that inequality is the biggest problem in the world, to believe that there's such a thing as systemic racism, which is not racism. Systemic racism is, is just tribalistic, deterministic racism on the part of those who hold that there is such a thing. A systemic racism. No, this is, this is a movement driven by people who are true nihilists. Who are true haters. So, it's... It was evident then, and of course it's become more evident over time, that the real agenda is a nihilistic, egalitarian agenda of ripping things down, ripping, tearing things down. And the more successful, the more shiny, the more they want to rip it down. Anyway, this brings us now, we saw this uh, during the, the, uh, after the Floyd uh, uh, killing and, and, uh, and the demonstrations after that, but what happened Monday I think was just, and, and what happened Sunday and then what happened following it is just so indicative of where we are as a country, particularly in the major cities. 
So somewhere in Chicago, I don't know Chicago well enough to know where, but somewhere in Chicago, a young man was uh, threatening people with, with a gun. Um, uh, don't know exactly what was going on there. Police showed up. Uh, he landed up shooting at police. Police shot at him, injured him. He's in the hospital right now, and I think he's being charged with attempted murder. Anyway, rumors spread that the police had just shot an unarmed uh, black young man. A demonstration started in the vicinity of where the shooting happened. Hundreds of people joined the demonstration, even though it was completely on false premises. Soon afterwards, through Twitter and Facebook, people organized across Chicago to head over to the America Mile in Chicago. And, you know, they used social media to do this in order explicitly to loot and destroy. So the magnificent wire was hit by looters. And you can see video of this, just smashing stores, cars coming up, people getting out, smashing the store, getting the stuff, bringing it back into the car and driving off. Vans coming in with people. This is all coordinated by Twitter, Facebook. People in a store calling up their friends, cars come up, they get in the car, off they go. Police arrested about 100 people, but generally police did very little. Partially, I think they were surprised by how organized it is and by the number of people, hundreds of looters. They smashed luxury stores. They smashed the Apple store. They went to the Louis Vuitton. I think they tried to smash into a, 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 a Watt store, but I don't, I don't know if they were successful. Um, they were just rampaging all over the place, but they spread out. It wasn't just Miracle Mile. It was all over the place. They went into Best Buy and slammed the Best Buy. And you can see photos. If you go online, you can see photos. Just horrific. I've just smashed stores, smashed, you know, destruction for the sake of destruction. Police overwhelmed. Not capable of managing the situation. Not being able to take control of any of it. And this wasn't about anger at something. This was about, this wasn't like we're marching down the street and some kids get, you know, overly excited and they go and they, uh, they smash a stone. No, this is clearly, clearly planned. I mean, planned on the moment through Twitter. And, and people converged on it, loot, get away. You know, Armani, uh, jewelry stores, uh, just, just, you know, uh, Magnificent Mile smashed and destroyed. And think about this, a major American city. And this is not Antifa. This is not Antifa. I don't think any of these people know what Antifa is. I don't think they could spell Antifa. These are just looters. These are just people who are pissed off and they want to go break stuff and they want to steal stuff and they've been told since they were very little that the man has it in for them that they are the victims of capitalism that they are being exploited by the capitalists that those greedy bastards on Michigan Avenue those greedy bastards on Michigan Avenue are living off of them they've been taught since they were very little that they are victims That they are owed. That somebody needs to give them stuff. Whether it is, um, you know, reparations or redistribution or welfare or a higher, you know, unemployment or $15 minimum wage. They are owed stuff. And the people who owe it are the people who shop and the people who sell on Michigan Avenue. These are not people, these are not people who know economics, who understand how an economy works. These are not people, and, and, and again, this, it's not, this has to do with education. Oh, Jack says, <laughs> wait, no, it's, it's the 5G that's making them loot. Yes, it's the corona 5G combination that makes them do it. <laughs> um, they, they've gone to school. 
and they turn on the television and watch the news. And you can see them and their allies all over this country. Wealth has been demonized now for decades. Prosperity, success, corporations, business has been demonized now for decades. So, why not? Why not go to these stores and steal stuff? These rich people don't need all this stuff. And it's all off their backs anyway. Because the only way people get rich, we are told, over and over and over and over again, is through exploiting the poor. Now, I'm not blaming, I mean, again, everybody's responsible for their actions. I am blaming these people. But the people responsible for this, the people really responsible for this, are people like Paul Krugman, people like Joseph Stiglitz, people like AOC, people like the teacher who put on Facebook today, a teacher in the Chicago public schools who posted on Facebook today it's property damage. It's a capitalist items. Calm down. This isn't looting. It's redistribution of wealth. Just calm down. It's just taking what's theirs. Taking what belongs to them. Taking what injustice is theirs. A teacher. At a school. I blame the professors at University of Chicago, Illinois. The commentators at the Chicago TV stations and radio stations. And the teachers, the teachers, the teachers in these public schools that don't teach kids anything about the real world. The culture that teaches them that they're entitled. And a world, a world that believes that CEOs should be dragged in front of Congress, left and right, and harassed for being too successful, making too much money, and making decisions that politicians don't like. You don't think these connected? You don't think it's connected that you drag CEOs in front of Congress and belittle them? A big corporations like Apple, and then an Apple store, and people go, who cares? It's just Apple. What's the big deal? It's, it's capitalist. Even Congress doesn't like them. Why should we like them? We're just stealing a bunch of iPhones. What's the big deal? Nobody tried to defend their stores because they didn't have time. This happened all in the middle of the night on Sunday. It started at 11 p.m. Shop owners were all asleep. Did looters attempt to rob any banks? I doubt it, because to rob a bank, you need to break into a vault. They're not that sophisticated. Thank you, Ashley. That's very generous. You've been very supportive lately. Thank you. It's the intellectuals who stand behind. It's the intellectuals that are preaching this garbage. It's the economics professors, the economics teachers, the economics Nobel Prize laureates. Nobel Prize lotteries, who've been telling the world that the biggest problem is inequality. Well, these guys are solving it. Paul Kogan was marching them right into the store and saying, look, these guys are wealthier than you. Let's solve the inequality problem. Now, it's a little less civilized than Paul would like it. Paul, Paul, can I call him Paul? Paul would like to do it the civilized way. Or Elizabeth Warren can join him and do it the civilized way. I have to say I'm relieved Biden didn't choose Elizabeth Warren, although I never thought he would. But I have to say I'm relieved because if he wins, oh, my God, can you Elizabeth Warren? Oh, my God. Um, but they want to do it the civilized way. Well, what's the civilized way? It's not smashing windows. It's not breaking in and stealing people's stuff. No. It's passing laws that raise people's taxes to 60, 70, 80%. It's a wealth tax that just takes the money from the owners of Louis Vuitton or the buyers of Louis Vuitton. Why bother with the store? Let's just go right to who the, who the people who buy there are and just put our hand in their checking account and take the money. Talk about robbing banks. 
It's our intellectual leaders and our politicians that want to rob the bank. What we have here, uh, uh, you know, this is, a, this is kind of a simpleton's approach to wealth redistribution and to, uh, you know, dealing with the inequality gap. Krugman and, 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 and I mean, these people are honest at least. They're honest because they know, they know, they know that the only way to reduce inequality is to steal stuff. To steal stuff. Now, Paul Krugman and Elizabeth Warren know that too. And George Stiglitz, another Nobel Prize winner in economics, all know that the only way to reduce inequality is to steal stuff. But they won't call it that. And they won't actually do the stealing. We'll have a vote. We'll put a bill together. We'll make it the law. And then, then, it's not stealing. Then it's not stealing. Ooh, I'm making people happy because I'm attacking the left. I know, it makes people so happy when I attack the left. Right? <laughs> it's, these people are, I mean, I hate, I have to admit, I hate Elizabeth Warren, George Stiglitz, and Paul Krugman more than I hate any of these rioters. A, because they make the rioters possible. And B, because they are worse in a sense that they're theft, they're thievery, they're stealing is on a much grander, bigger scale. And they hide behind the rule of law. They, or the supposed rule of law. They, they hide behind the scenes and manipulate and scheme to do basically what these looters are doing. Smash windows, steal property, destroy property, take property. And by the way, the nihilistic motivation is the same. Rioters and intellectuals, same nihilistic motivation, same motivation to destroy, same motivation to steal, same motivation to take, same motivation to pull people down. But the one's more honest. They just go out there into the street and they do it. The other one couches it in all kinds of explanations and, and theory and ultimately, ultimately, feeds, feeds the people doing it in the street. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes, that should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want, to see, I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at youronbrookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals. Uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value, hopefully, you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll, or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe, because that way you'll know when to show up 
you'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.